And thanks, David, for um, generously talking to me on a Sunday evening. Um, and yeah, actually, I, I, th I, think, I think of you as a very generous writer. I, I know you most through the books, and um, you, you're one of these writers that makes me feel clever. And some people, some writers make make me think that they're very clever and and, and I think that about you but but you, you you make me feel clever as a reader whenever I leave the universe or, or of, of your books um but so 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 thank you well, you're welcome um I must just rudely interrupt really quickly to say I, I I don't I we've spoken a little bit uh for the tech test and and I really don't think you need anyone's help to be clever uh mm -hmm. you, you you um uh, the way you spoke about language um, while you're a poet, what more can I say? Oh, well, uh, anyway, my interruption is over. <laughs> Sorry. No, again, typically generous, but can I just start off with, with just asking you about first experiences of you stammering and, and how Napoleon might or might not have been involved? Sure. I think I would have been about seven or eight years old. Uh, I'm interrupting myself already, it's a bad habit. I was a very, very late starter uh, in speaking. Um, my mum took me to a speech therapist, I think I was about four or five. Um, it was touch and go between whether I would be set, between me starting school and speaking. Uh, up until a few weeks before I started school, aged five, I think, apparently, I hadn't actually spoken. Uh, I do remember a speech therapist because I remember the toys in Southport, Lancashire. However, uh, that's not really stammering, that's sort of not speaking at all. Um, a recovered theme. <laughs> and then moved down to Worcestershire. And this is, this is one of those memories that you've, you, you've examined, you've taken out of the memory box and examined it um, so often you're not sure if what you're remembering are previous examinations mm. or the original mother load memory, the, 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 the events that happened. So it's, it's a bit Schrodinger's cat-esque. I'm not, it's, it's, it's one or the other or sort of both or neither. However, um, I think about eight years old, primary school, hot summer's day, and a primary school teacher, Miss Hyde, she was, showing us how to play hangman. Um, she was a literary ex-public school girl type of primary school teacher. Uh, and the word that she had uh, chosen for her classroom of eight-year-olds was the word Napoleon. Uh, not exactly age appropriate, but I saw what the word was and I put my hand up to answer it and then I blocked. And I think that was the first time in my life that I sort of stammered in public, I just could not get the word out. Um, and, 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 and my face went like a blocker's face. And, and I remember the, for the first time seeing um, you know, what that does to other people's faces, which, um, um, so that scene at the beginning of the King's Speech when it happens at Wembley on, on that sort of misty, and, and, and that was such a, that's such a great moment. I hadn't really seen that done in film before. You often see ineptly written stammerers on film, but you don't see um, what the kind of, the, 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 there's a particular sort of gawping astonishment that goes on on people's faces when they're looking at you, which of course, enters the feedback loop and makes the block even worse and round and round you go in this uh, vicious circle until such time as, 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 as you get the word out or substitute the word. So uh, that was that. Um, and I put that scene, if this is sounding suspiciously familiar to anyone who's read uh, one of my novels, Black Swan Green, which is sort of about a um, young stammer and, and, and his life and his relationship with his stammer, then, uh, then then that's why uh, I put that scene in my book, Napoleon, Miss Hyde, round about 1977 or so. I've got the book here actually, it's a, a great book. Um, and hey. if, you, if you haven't read it, you, you, you must um, read it. Yeah, I think you have the word night, Nightingale in, in your retelling of, of the- Really? Um, yeah, I think you put, put Nightingale, you're obviously hiding, hiding this bit of the story that maybe Napoleon was too heavy a character. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you put um, it's interesting. interesting. It brings up the idea of fluency yeah. and 
music and poetry. Yeah. And how, when appropriating things from life, um, I don't appropriate them completely. I, 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 I do sometimes sort of switch it by 30%. Uh, yeah. So it's uh, true enough to the original for the emotions to get non-impacted, but um, but maybe um, altered enough for me to feel like I'm in control and not my memory or reality, my mm. memory of reality. But you've still got the dreaded end sound at the at the start, and, and so I do, so, I do. Um, so is that your first kind of worrying letter? N. Um, yeah, it was. Um, uh, I'd like to ask, I mean, it's usually been consonants and they've evolved down the years. N must have been an mm. early one. I remember being worried about being, I think when I, was, I was worried about either turning 10 or turning 12, because then I wouldn't be able to say the name, kind of, then I wouldn't be able to say my age when asked, how old are you? Mm. Um, then my stammer really decided to go for broke uh, and it switched to D. David, what's your name? I couldn't say it. Uh, not a lot of fun. Um, these days it's hard C's, K's and uh, S's. Um, mm. But um, um, I, I've, I, I, I have methods to, to coexist with my stammer that I didn't have back then. I just, 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 uh, the one that um, speech and language therapists technically call bung on a vowel at the beginning. Um, mm. So I, um, so if, 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 if I'm in a restaurant and I, this is just a, uh, a, a, an, an example I made earlier rather than a remark about my nutritional habits, but uh, if I want to order the salad, uh, then, then I ask for, not for the salad, but the salad or mm. a salad. So uh, I, if, if, if the consonant's in the middle, if I have the momentum of the started word, then, uh, then usually I don't block on it. But uh, I didn't know about that back then, so, uh, so I block. Um, I just want to ask you, Zaf, uh, do you, um, has your blocking letters changed over time or, or has it been pretty consistent down the years? Um, no, it, it, for me it actually began a bit later, about the time uh, the character Jason in this book, uh, he's 13, it's about that, that kind of time. And it was worse for it, just for a couple of years, really. Um, but yeah, it was it was more beginnings and consonants, like, like B and G in the beginning. Um, it, it was, yeah, it was more about beginnings and and perhaps perhaps technically, would, would that be a stutter or, or a stammer? I, I, I never know the, the difference because I never got speech therapy. Right. Um, well, there will be some experts uh, very, very nearby to this. Uh, I think um, the difference is subjective and even the difference varies from territory to territory. Uh, I have been told, uh, hey, there's some remarks coming up already, but uh, I have been told, and I think Wikipedia has this as well, although this is, although yeah. Wiki is hardly the gospel, uh, but um, stutter ten oh, I've been told that stutters and Americanism, stammerers and Britishism. I've also been told that um, stutter is uh, repetitive machine gun um, mm. disfluency where you c -c 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 can't get the word out. Whereas a stammer is uh, a block where nothing comes out, as in I can't get the word out. Mm. Now I've been, uh, there, uh, there's an array of authorities and, and an array of opinions. Uh, yeah. I think the net result is I generally feel okay using these interchangeably. If yeah. there is a hard and fast rule, uh, yeah. it seems so debatable and subjective yeah. that um, kind of the, the grammatical principle of um, what most people do, that's right yeah. uh, in the long term. It's, it's interesting that, that, that you were saying that you, you felt quite beforehand when you were a kid because I, um, cause I, I, I don't know if I if my stutter began earlier than when I was like 12 13 but uh, I was definitely kind of quiet sometimes and overly quiet and um, and that in itself was a kind of 
perhaps a disfluency of speech because I remember sometimes my sister would answer questions for me who was younger than me and I would um and so did, did you feel that you had anything before that that moment even um that you remember as some kind of issue around getting things out I mean, really, really uh, I've, I've been told that it was I was just a very very late starter as uh, as I've already said between that late start and and the Napoleon day I don't really have memories um of anything at all much I well I slightly Riley said uh, that not speaking is a theme I, I I have noticed in my work how um even even when I Try and keep them out. Uh, an, an, an archetypal theme in my work is, is communication going wrong. It's um, being stuck in one language, not being able to express yourself with any degree of fluency. Uh, disfluency, actually, is, but, uh, is, 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 is what I'm saying, kind of, that's the theme. Or um, uh, a stammering character, or a character not necessarily existing in uh, in the contemporary world but 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 either historically or, or even in the 60s where where um, their autism or Asperger's is not diagnosed but it's kind of there and the modern eye can diagnose it retrospectively they also don't quite um, aren't so able to play the conversational game uh, the Ping pong, the chess rules, uh, by which, um, well, well, which we're using now, uh, mm -hmm. the uh, the um, nonverbal signalling that goes on, the tilts of the head to indicate that attention is being paid. The I'm sure there were words for this that linguists would know, but but, but um, the the, the, the mm noise that check in to show evidence that the other person's still listening. Or, um, all of these things are also a part of communication and not everyone can do them. Uh, there, there, there exists a kind of disfluency in nonverbal communication as well as in verbal. Um, mm. Interesting stuff. And, um, and every artist is a walking bundle of archetypal themes. There's the things, the themes we consciously import in and the themes that are consciously there, uh, sorry, that are unconsciously there already. They're there if we want them to be there or not because they're us. And certainly disfluency is one of mine. And um, as it happens, that's, that's, that has come in handy for a writer mm. down the years. It's interesting that I doubt if people around you would think that you're disfluent um, in, in any way or um, would they? It, 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 it mugs me occasionally. Um, mm. Once or twice I've done a reading, say I'm jet lagged and I'm tired and and I'm a bit intimidated if there's a big audience and I'll block. Um, once upon a time, that would have kind of started the Hitchcock psycho strings going off in the background and 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 and, and it would have got worse and worse. Uh, now, happily, I'm, I'm I'm able to say, "Hey, I'm stammering. I haven't done this for a bit," and 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 I'll either spell the word out, there'll be a bright young person in the front row of the audience and I'll spell the word out and I'll say, can you say this for me, please? And they say it. And if I come across that word elsewhere in the text, this this, this happened once in a reading I did of um, a historical novel I wrote about Japan and the name of the ship in this battle scene. <laughs> I couldn't get out. I'm blocked on, so I had to spell it. And then every time I needed it, I would just point to the person and I'd say it. And um, I wish I could have shared my 13-year-old self that, because uh, like it's it's kind of okay. Um, and actually, I can rarely remember ever having an audience more on my side mm. for that. Um, there is a there is a strength in exposing your vulnerabilities. Um, not admittedly when you're in a, um, a bog standard comprehensive school playground and you're 13 years old, there's not, there's not a lot of, <laughs> well, uh, the kind of is, but I wasn't strong enough to do that then. Um, and, 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 and I wasn't content enough in, 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 in the skin of my stammer, but, um, um, 
So I suppose my stammer can look quite hidden. Um, I guess down the years I've been able to graft on certain methods like the bung on a vowel method uh, to such degree that I generally can do occasionally even live TV work without my stammering being an issue. But certainly my first few readings, uh, first two or three years of readings really, I, I was, you know, uh, I, I didn't realize you had to do this as a novelist. I, I, I thought, yeah, I'm kind of, it's like being a lighthouse keeper. It's one of those jobs you can just sort of go and do and never communicate with anyone. Like, little did I know that it was, it's one thing to write them. You then, uh, uh, if you want to make a living from it or stand a chance of making a living from it, then an element of publicity is necessary. Uh, and, 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 and this does mean public speaking in many cases, which certainly isn't a forte, but uh, thanks, um, thanks to the passage of time, and thanks, I guess, to to the working accommodation I've come with my stuff. I'm 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 speaking, 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 Zaf. I'm, I'm answering questions no. which I haven't even asked yet. If this is okay, <laughs> then I'll the, uh, the, 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 then then I'll just do this quick thing. But yeah, for, for years I was at war with my stammer. For years it was my mortal enemy. Uh, uh, it was it was this evil twin. Um, and I thought, yeah, I hated it, I resented it. Um, I, I didn't have much speech therapy either. It, 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 it was too crafty for that. Whenever I went to see a speech therapist, it would vanish and speech therapist would say to my mum, well, what's the problem? Uh, but, but, but then it would be back in the car on the way home. You know, it was like, you clever bastard, why are you kind of hiding like that? But, um, I thought that if only I could summon up enough willpower, I would destroy it. And I did think in those terms, I'd banish it, I'd exile it, I'd ignore it. It was all negative. Um, and kind of as a result of writing Black Swan Green, um, I've reached the same sort of conclusion that Jason does in that novel. Um, you can't be at war with yourself. My stand is me. It's like being at war with my liver. Uh, it, uh, what good's that gonna do? Um, and so I started to think of it like, okay, oh, almost like sort of like a co-tenant that had nowhere else to go. Uh, it refused to be evicted because it couldn't exist without me. But so, but 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 if I was at war with it, then it would retaliate because I wouldn't. It's, it's it's a bit like one of those episodes of Star Trek or Doctor Who where where the doctor works out that no, this alien isn't this evil thing that's destroying people for fun. It, 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 it needs help. And the puzzle is, and the plot is to work out, well, okay, what does it need? Like, mm. how can I help? <laughs> and, um, and to sort of work, work with the problem that way and maybe turn the problem, maybe turn the problem into something else. So I, I use these terms, I, I, and I think I've used it once already just in, in, in the last 20 minutes, but I, I came to a working accommodation with my stand-back. Mm. Okay, I'll give you a break. I'll stop trying to kill you. Uh, in return, please, could you just, if I, need to, if I need to speak, could you please just give me a break sometime as well, and let's see how this goes. Um, and I sort of built trust with it. Uh, and this, I think, is why um, I make the impression of being a more fluent person than I am. Um, what, what, and what, what, I, I, last thing, uh, I want to make a point that, it, that, that my stamina is still here. Um, mm. I've got a friend who's, who, who's an alcoholic and hasn't had a drink for 15, 20 years. He's a strong, wonderful guy. He still says, I'm an alcoholic. Uh, I, I, I aspire to be a teetotal alcoholic, but I'm an alcoholic. Mm. I was, and I am. Mm. Uh, and I sort of aspire to be a not blocking very often stammerer. Mm. Uh, and, 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 and I like to bring up that I'm a patron of this wonderful organization uh, that, uh, that I'm still interested in stammering. I still stammer, I'm stammering now, but I'm using methods to not block, um, which I'm fortunate in some ways that I can do that. And, 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 and you know, it's not a question of being smart. It's just a question of being, kind of my I, I haven't rejected the transplant uh, mm. uh I, 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 I've been able to graft on certain methods that help me appear that, that that help me 
coexist with my stammer. I will now let you get a word in edgeways. Thank you, everyone, for listening to me. I'm, I'm just sort of eager, mainly rambling talker, but uh, this is an interview, so. And I think it's, it's great, great for everyone to hear that, and and for me as well. I, I, I relate to that. It's, it's you know, it's something that's there that that you make an accommodation with and mm. negotiate with, and 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 I can see that in your work as well. Just how aware you are of um, the idea of agency and character characters having kind of things within them that might might go different ways and. Um, and you know, uh, going back to Black Swan Green, uh, Jason, a thirteen-year-old character in that has he kind of uh, personifies the stammer as hangman, doesn't doesn't he? And um, it's interesting because yeah. it kind of brings up the idea of death and um, and carrying around this kind of personification of death. <laughs> yeah. um, yes, uh, uh, and and so um, uh, did you think that that's kind of affected? your work the, the idea of i don't know the self being split and maybe you know going in different directions at once it certainly rhymes with it it rhymes with this theme um as the poet was was i contain multitudes that was one of whitman's was it yes it was, yeah, that? yeah i i am yeah. large I um it's yeah. beautiful, isn't it? Three yeah. beautiful words. I contain multitudes. Um, uh, we all do. Um, I think someone asked. Clearly, me, we can see this on. Um, do you say? Was, was it, do, I, do I contradict myself? And then, then yeah, and it's that, that inner contradiction that that turning it around into a good thing. And I think you have the word yes. multitude. Yes. You have the word multitude in the last line of Cloud Atlas, isn't it? Something about the ocean containing multitudes or drops. Yeah. Of, yeah. That's true, that's true, that's true. I hadn't thought of that, yeah. Um, you're only a drop in the ocean. Yeah, what is any ocean but a multitude of drops? Uh, yeah, I've noticed that. It's a beautiful word, multitude. And you start... Ooh. Yeah. It's, 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 it's not a sort of a mega unusual word, but it's one of those words, if you look at it from a weird angle, it, it, it's, it's, um, it's quite a magical word. Um, can I interrupt it, again? Like, like, so, sorry, no, no, I'm not going to. No, no, I want to hear what you're going to say. So, sorry, I've changed my mind. <laughs> <laughs> Super quick. Um, emotionally, we can we contain multitudes. We can have a blazing argument with a spouse, uh, and and it and, and, and we seem so justified, and 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 this is this is so right, and yet, fifteen minutes later, you think, Jesus, do I really say those things? Like, I, oh. Um, so which one's the real you? Well, they're both real. I mean, mm. well, they both are. Uh, and more than two. <laughs> um, yeah. so, I, think, I think a lot of your work has to do with like plurality, plural world, worlds um, and keeping the various possibilities alive. And just going back to the experience of stammering or stuttering, it, in the middle of that mm. kind of pause, uh, when I look back, I, I think, so much was in that little moment and to the other person that that nanosecond passes very quickly but um it almost feels like all of my previous experiences of being stuck are, are flying into into that little nanosecond and it maybe even the future yeah. is flying into it and 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 i see that a lot in your work that this sense of, of moments containing kind of universes of time almost and uh, I'm wondering if, if somehow you, you think there's a link there with the, with the way you explore time so, so oh. wonderfully in your book, in your books. It, it, well, thank you. Uh, I, I can't necessarily agree with wonderfully, but I can but I can say that that time is something I guess I think about a lot. That um, English strong marks. Uh, sorry, strong arms. I, I, I crossed strong arm and frog march and got strong march there. Um, English uh, strong arms is into treating time like a singular because we've got plurals and singulars. Um, and so if it's not a plural, it must be a singular. But uh, time is a plural. Uh, we should say times when we talk about time. Uh, there's so many of them. There's, there's, Biological time, lunar time, historical time, ancient time, 
circadian time, um, I've had historical time, biblical time, there's life time, there's, there's deep time, there's not only the times that the geological time, the, 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 the continents have shifted and split up and shifted and split up, there's even a solar equivalent of that whereby our sun goes nova and explodes and then recoalesces. There's so many times there's 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 a single minute, there's 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 a time we've been talking, there's nano time, there's so many times. It's beautiful. Uh, it's another multitude. And I guess there's stammering time, there's blocking time. You know, in it, you block. If it's filmed, then you'll just hear that do do. Duda, duda, duda. It would slow down, you'd get the face of the person witnessing the block. Um, and sure, I think uh, it does make sense that um, when we block, we are all the other times we've blocked, past, present, and future as well. We're in block time. Uh, and and it, 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 when you do it in the future, you know that that moment would also be there. And you probably sense that in that moment of blocking that. I'm going to remember this and and you and you of course you do and and it's just amazing how much can be contained in that small moment you know how many multitudes of time frames if you like can be contained in this tiny moment um uh, which which in a way probably is a great training ground for a, a writer to be aware of the many possibilities that that a sentence can contain Oh, uh, we've gone from time to something else, haven't we? Um, I guess we've gone from time to interpretability or time to to meta nuance. <laughs> meta -nuance. Um, it's good. <laughs> um, all the possible meanings of a word. Sure. I mean, I, I, I'm not sure how uh, how how cogent or coherent. Um, Cogency is important. Coherency, or, or, or the flow from one of your talk, um, from one subject area to another. I'm not sure how important this needs to be in a conversation, Zaf. But uh, mm. certainly, here is another um, thing in my life. Um, artworks by art exists in three places: uh, the mind of the maker, the artifact that is made, and then the mind of the receiver of the art. It's no, it's, it, that's the holy trinity of, of art. It's all, it's all three at once. Um, mm. And that's where the art is. It's in three places at once. And um, you, don't get, you don't get to say part three. You don't get to say how it's going to be received. You, you present a menu uh, that you cannot see the end of. Um, you might just, it might have one thing on the menu. Uh, but you, but 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 by the time it's gone through the artifact and into the mind of the recipient, what you thought was on the menu might not be it. Um, mm. But um, and that's the way it is, and that's how you work. And that and when you know that, it's a bit of a liberation. You don't have to be so damn pres prescriptive about what impression this has to make on the mm. mind of the reader you just sort of have to have faith that it will um mm. and you get this on the receiving end as a reader or writers and poets are readers as well it's why we're here if you go back far enough and th there's no way mark twain could have known that at the beginning of huckleberry finn when he's got that beautiful Paragraph, a beautiful nocturne in the American South about um, kind of a nightjar singing and uh, it's not a nightjar, it's, it's uh, a bird. A dog was howling about someone who was going to die or, or, or something like this. Um, he can't know how I would take that. Uh, I, I, I'm, 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 I'm born a hundred years after, um, but um, but I like to think he would have had faith that it would have made some kind of an impression on someone from a different mm. culture, different time, different mindset, different everything. But mm. but there's something in the words that is not a blank menu. There's something that's mm. that's fecund with possibilities. 
uh, that's nuanced. It's not either or. It's 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 many and it contains multitudes. Yeah, yeah. But I, I wonder if um, if you, but maybe someone who's sensitive around language at a young age. Um, but part of the act of I don't know sabotaging the the, the next word that's going to come or something. Maybe involved in that is a kind of over consciousness or something of of language or something or, or maybe a care around language that you don't quite know what to do with and it ends up being this kind of splitting off thing where, where you, you've got hangman sitting on your tongue or something um but actually do you think it might come from a kind of almost an over care or, or consciousness of how how big language is which you know i find it difficult to agree with you that I was that careful and conscious mm. at that age. Uh, I would, however, say that it does seem to be a natural consequence of word avoidance. Uh, mm. That was my first method, going to be a damn good word avoider. Mm. Um, I'd phone my friend Rich or Charles and say, and I'd want to say, what are you doing today? I was stammering on D's. This is the, I couldn't say my own name phase. And uh, so I couldn't say, what are you doing? I'd have to say, uh, you, you, you do the high speed auto cue, you see what blocking words are coming up later on in the sentence. So you've got to shift them on the hoof before mm -hmm. the person spots it. So I'd, I'd say, and I, I remember doing this, what are you up to today? Uh, and like a translator, um, uh, it's close, but up to is a bit trivializing it's a bit infantilizing it's possibly it's got a whiff of condescension oh and what are we up to today in our little games it's not quite the same uh what did it be doing but it couldn't be so well, the thing is kind of anything else this is it in block time you walk about a third of a second to do all of that uh let's go with what are you up to today now that's one example uh, and it's an example I've used before, which is why it's at the front of my mind and I'm ready to serve it up fully prepared. But that was where I lived. That was where all word avoiders lived. That's what I did all the time. That's how I spoke. Um, that that auto cue could never rest. And um, that, of course, engenders a, I suppose, a virtuosic level of sensibility, sensitivity, kind of both. Um, about language, uh, a sense that synonyms are almost never synonyms, uh, even if they mean exactly the, the same thing, the, 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 the way of using them, the lexical application is not the same. The register might be different. Uh, it might be a high register word, um, sort of, um, 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 I don't have an example at the front of my head here, but say if you're um, 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 you want to say he's got the gift of the gab, but you're going to block on the G's. So uh, what's a synonym? Well, there's loquacious, there's mellifluous, uh, there's um, a charismatic speaker, but but if you're 13, you can't you can't you, 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 if you can't say loquacious. What 13 year old says loquacious? Uh, that becomes the story. That becomes you, you, you kind of become one of those poor kids that were paraded on Blue Peter as child geniuses that we're all supposed to be like. You know you, you, that, that gets you beaten up. You can't say loquacious in in uh, not in my playground. <laughs> that got you beaten up. So you're coming face to face with the phenomenon with the phenomenon of register mm. um, and I use that every single time I write a line of dialogue yeah. um, who's speaking it's not just what they say it's how they say it it's matching the lexical register with the speaker if that's wrong the reader catches on it's hanging on this character so he's supposed to be this uneducated oik but he's saying loquacious uh, that's wrong and, if, and 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 even if the reader might not articulate that they it's kind of the needle jumps it's like a hiccup um uh, so i suppose we're coming around here to sort of say how 
Ooh, this, I hesitate to say it because it can sound glib, and I, I really don't mean it as glib, but, but there are applications in which my stammer has been a, it's been a professional gift. It may mm. even have been a determinator uh, mm. regarding the kind, of, the kind of writer I am. I think mm. I might have been a reader, uh, I might have been a writer anyway, but I, 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 I doubt I'd have been this writer, this particular one talking to you now. Um, because yeah, there's lots of um, kind of polyphony in multiple voices and you, you do that very well and I can see someone's asked a question about a kind of you know, this multi-level narrative approach and um, and it's not just different voices it's di different worlds isn't it um, um, is these small small but in connect interconnected worlds that you know uh, that you create and I, I wonder if you, you feel that that what the way a sentence might split off into various possibilities and you, you carry around this thesaurus of possibilities with every word whether that has enabled this multi-world way of thinking about things where you can take contain the world uh, within the one world I'm only hesitating because that's a really great idea and I'm trying to work out what's wrong with it. It's easiest to say yes because it feels so right, but I'm, 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 I'm too much of a tire kicker to just not examine it. Um, so essentially my stammer gave me an, perhaps an unusually acute awareness of of, of the fact that a word is not a point, but a zone. A word is a field of applications, a field of meanings. It's not one thing. Yeah. It's a classic mistake people who've never translated, including me, used to think that uh, a straight translation, you just, this word means this word, uh, as if it's a translator's choice to make it more florid and flowery, uh, or straight. Uh, actually, there's no such thing as straight. Uh, and and, and, and a little, even a little bit of, Translation, you realize, oh God, there's like there's six ways to say I in Japanese, and all of them will alter uh, the, well, the gender of who is speaking, the social status of who is speaking. How do you translate I, the basic, basic pronoun in Japanese? It depends. Uh, but that's true for every, but that's true for all words. All words are fields of, of meanings, they're not points. Um, so it's my, yeah, I, I, I can't argue my stammering. If it, if it wasn't my stammer that sensitized me to this, then I've got no idea what was uh, what it was. So I can't think of another contender. So yes, 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 yes. And now from language over to worlds, worlds within worlds. Well, we're talking about ontology, mm -hmm. uh, the branch of metaphysics that deals with creation. Um, talking about, I guess, science fiction trope, you know, kind of, it's a bit like the holodeck on Star Trek, a world within a world. Uh, mm. And of course, Star Trek is a TV show. So that's sort of within, in other words, the holodeck is two levels of reality down. And if someone's in the holodeck and they start to tell a story or, or, or show a TV within the holodeck, then you're three levels of reality down. Um, I love this stuff. <laughs> um, I love the idea that there are ontological Russian dolls, nests within nests within nests, and sure, this is a theme in my work as well. And uh, I've noticed that before, but the idea that this has somehow come from, is it causative or is it a reflection? Like that's, mm. that's the question, that one I don't know, but it certainly, um, it certainly has the same shape of the lexical multitudes. The ontological multitudes has the same shape of, as the lexical multitudes, which is itself a very high register thing to be saying at this time of day on a Sunday evening. Yeah, if you're talking about Sunday evening and all these different scales of time, like are we due to finish, uh, are we an hour or, or 45 minutes to, to, to we get? If it's 45, I've blown it out of the water. I'm really <laughs> sorry, everybody. I haven't let anyone get a word in any way. Um, shall we pretend it's an hour? Uh, yeah, and, an hour. and and if, if if anyone needs to leave, 
then then it's fine because they don't right. have to get up and walk out of uh, a lecture theatre or something. They can just right. quietly drop off. But as long as you're okay for time's up, then I am. Uh, I, 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 totally, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's funny, isn't it? We're talking about how these dilatory moments of time and time being elastic, but, but we've forgotten just the clock time, haven't we? Um, so, uh, yeah, the, clock time, the most obvious, and I forgot the clock time when we were speaking as well. <laughs> I, I thought of all these other types, but not the clock time. Uh, yeah, shall we look through the questions? Uh, yeah. There's some great ones. Got a quick question from Andrew Morehouse. Um, I was going to ask if you've read the John Updike essay, Getting the Words Out. Um, and Updike was a stammer. I, uh, I haven't read that. Um, I haven't either, but um, now I will. Um, um, uh, thank do, you, Andrew. Do, do you, uh, Lisa Grant, do you have any strategies and techniques that personally helped you to manage your stammer? But you, you've spoken about that, haven't you, a bit with, with this salad and the, the salad. Uh, the salad, the, sorry. The bung on the vowel. Yeah, that <laughs> yes. one really yeah. lets me down. Uh, <laughs> the, um, the, well, word avoidance. Not great. Yeah. It feels like a bit of a, um, a cop out, but, but 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 at a push, I will still use it. Uh, but um, it feels like a bit of a kind of defeat and almost a lack of respect um, to my stammer. Uh, but I've still been known to use it. Uh, what else? Um, I suppose just the what we all do. Um, the thoughtful pause before my next word while I'm gearing up to mm. say the word. Uh, I pretend that I'm sifting through various I mean it's quite a clumsy yeah. method as well um it's 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 also it also accords neatly with um before people talked about disfluency and speech impediments uh, I think stutter and stammer sound like old Anglo-Saxon words that you might have found in Chaucer or Shakespeare I don't know but um but in polite circles the word was hesitancy if, mm. if, 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 if an 18th century duke um I, um I got that from a great book that was out last year about stammer who's by uh, the author, and I do apologise if, if, if the author's watching, but uh, this isn't uh, my original observation, but uh, in in olden times, um, a euphemism for stammering was he, he spoke with a hesitancy. Uh, yeah, me too sometimes, when I'm after the right, when I'm, yeah. but, it, but my hesitation is not, because I can't locate the word. I know damn well what it is, it's just I also know damn well I'm going to block on it. So it comes a bit of a space here, a little bit of a, a triple jumper's, <laughs> but, uh, uh, and and so that's that's another method there's there's there's, there's probably a couple more yeah, i think, I think if, you, if you slow down you, you almost become a bit more in control of time don't don't you and, and timing which is and, and to feel that you're in charge somehow of, of that and that to feel like the other thing isn't in charge true, true. yeah exercising agency again um that's yeah. great it's a good question from Jonathan Reed, and I going to just ask you this. Compared to English, do you stammer more in Japanese as unfamiliarity can catch you out more or less because the habitual blocks don't exist? Yeah, uh, I, I also stammer in Japanese uh, on the same consonants. Oh. So it, it, it's, it's, I mean, that's just my experience. You do hear this idea sometimes you don't stammer in another language. Uh, I, I've... I've never actually spoken with someone who says, yeah, I don't stammer in French. I don't stammer in right. Italian. I speak yeah. some Italian as well. And I also stammer in Italian. I think, I, th I suspect it might be one of, might be semi-mythical or pseudo-mythical. I'm, I'm not quite sure. Um, Non-stammerers are often surprised to learn that, I think is also universal. I'd love some feedback on this. I don't stammer when I'm talking to animals. I don't stammer when I'm talking to babies. I don't stammer when I'm talking to myself in the shower, which is quite a lot. Uh, that took my wife some years to get used to, but she knows it's, she knows it's okay. Um, it's a right thing. You run through dialogue yeah. lines. Um, it, I do stammer once a kid becomes a sentient kid. When they're, say, three or four years old, then I'll start to stammer with them. It's as if, which suggests to me that the stammer is triggered by the other person's, my perception of the other person's perception of me mm. um, but, um and of course in another language i know that they are perceiving me so i will duly stammer in their mm. language um could, uh, could i just zip to um patrick uh, campbell 
um, at the fifth one down. Uh, Seven questions for David. Oh, thank you. How, how does your son's experience with autism intersect with his experience of stammering? My son's non-verbal, so actually quite a lot. Uh, what well, David could you share anything about the similarities and differences? E more differences, I think. Um, my son has a big vocabulary. Uh, he's got a passive, big passive vocabulary in English and in Japanese. Um, but he can't do what we're doing now. Um, the the app of conversation is simply not downloaded for free in him. Um, and as all people uh, who are autistic, that, that they, they have to hand assemble, they have to hand code these apps. It can take years uh, and they're heroes for handling it. Um, invited, it's a heroism that's sort of thrust upon them rather than what is claimed, but I don't think it's any less for all of that. It often talks about his words to myth this coming from Stanley, but I wonder if he also thinks his almost unique multi-level narrative approach, thank you, comes from narrative approach comes from Stanley. You talked about that, Zaf. Yeah, uh, no, um, I think you covered that. Uh, hopefully, Patrick will agree. Uh, and I talked around, around the houses for a bit, but I ended up on a yeah, yeah, maybe it does. Uh, I'll let you choose the next one. Zaf, sorry. Oh, um, what have we got? Um, uh, we've got do authors or poets with a stammer receive fewer invitations to media related events? <laughs> um, I, um, I don't know. In uh, what do you think, Zef? Um, oh, well, um, I, I, I don't think so. No, no that there, there are poets who've had quite, um, you know, more noticeable or overt stammers who who, who do very well with with readings. And um, no, I don't think so. I, but I, 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 I can only speak for for my experience. Um, I, I'm sure I don't know if it affects radio and things like that. And um, I could only know if I had a circle of poet author friends who stammered, uh, as you say, noticeably, and I need to ask them. Um, me, no. Uh, I talk about it. I think. I think actually, um, the people who do in People who do the inviting always check you out on YouTube ahead of time to kind of make sure you look like a reliable booking. Um, That's why I don't and... get <laughs> um, uh, Of course they do. They lose their jobs if they get it wrong yeah. or, 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 or if events go wrong often enough. So, um, so I, think, I think were that to be true, it would sort of happen slightly invisibly. Um, it would be hard to be hard to find out. I think just have to go to the Writers Guild of Great Britain, find a subset of mm. writers who stammer, compare that to a subset of writers who don't, and then maybe begin to sort of approach some reliable data. But uh, mm. I don't think so, and I hope not. But that's mm. but that's all I know. Back to you, Zef. Um So I think have we covered most of the. Um, can, can I can There's I from Jonathan. Oh, oh, sorry. Oh, just one more. Uh, um, do publishers or make any accommodation for creators with the stammer when they are required to help publicise their work? Um, I've never heard of this accommodation. Um, it is in your publisher's interest to sort of make sure you're okay with things that you can do. It. Um, the Americans are more up to speed with um, media workshops. Um, younger writers may well be sort of um, invited on to sort of um, in, invited to workshops where you can learn how best to express your points, how to do it snappily, how to do it, how to do a great elevator pitch. I'm, I'm a bit more old school and I'm just old. Uh, so I think all of these workshops are newer than I was. And, and, and so I've, 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 I've sort of learned it a bit more organically and by default. Thank you. Do you know something about, about, about the idea of this idea of not treating the stammer like an enemy um, mm -hmm. and kind of almost just being able to observe it w w without judgment or something and that helping? Has that, has that carried into other areas of life? You know, the, the idea of, you know, not, not judging something and allowing it to be what it is, even if you maybe it's something that you didn't want to be there. 
I, well, I, I, I like the sound of it. I would hope so. I, as we've agreed, we contain multitudes. There's a more Zen master me that would do that. Um, and then there's a more rash, impatient Mr. Toad me that doesn't. <laughs> They're at odds with one another. Um, I, I, I guess one aspect of maturation of, of this road to maturity is um, as, as is uh, said in the medieval poem, Desiderata. Uh, it, it has that line about, may God grant me the, uh, the, the strength to, I, I'm botching this horribly and apologies, but I, the strength to overcome those problems that I can overcome, the fortitude to bear those problems that I can't overcome and the wisdom to know one from the other. Um, that's a handy sentiment and it's one that I hope as you get older in, in compensation for um, organs no longer working as well as they once did. Um, hopefully that you can, can, you can internalize things like that a little bit better. And I suppose become better at living. Um, now my stammer is one of the teachers that worked on that particular one with me. Uh, this, um, uh, can't defeat my stammer because if that were possible, I would have done by now. It's not a question of willpower. It's not a question of outwitting it. It's a question of, um, as I've said, um, um, thinking of it in 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 a, in a different way. Uh, it happens. I've needed to do that in in other areas as well. Um, I've done autism since it's come up already. Um, you know. Um, there's no magic bullet. It's not a disease. There's no cure. Um, there's dominant narratives. There it comes down to this about it, just as there's dominant narratives about a stammer, that it's a source of mortification, that it's that it's something you have to go on workshops to overcome. Uh, and I'm not knocking these workshops. Uh, it's just, I do think perhaps whether they are upfront about it or not, the use of these workshops is more about coming to an accommodation with your stammer rather than defeating it or, 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 or removing it or erasing it. Um, it. Things we think of as, 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 as misfortunes in life or, or, or even genetic shortcomings or, or, or flaws or, or regrettable sources of grief or woe or whatever. Um, maybe a big part of the problem is, is, is it's actually, it's, it's that, it's us thinking about them in those terms. And if we can think of them in other, in other terms and, and, and perhaps do a bit of work at persuading other people to think of them in perhaps a more, in a more accepting or more diverse manner, then maybe that's, Maybe that's more use. Maybe that's more helpful. Maybe that's um, that that contributes to to becoming a multitude that speaks with itself, rather than one that rather than a, a, a multitude that is a bar fight. <laughs> um, and 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 so say um, I, I tried other approaches with my son's autism. I tried denial. I tried. Um, uh, I tried anger. Uh, I tried. Uh, I just want to say when I tried. It's just sort of this sort of why me thing. Uh, I tried everything else, um, but then well, okay, uh, this is real and it's here and it's him. Uh, it's part of who he is, and, and maybe this, and certainly these help in 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 learning to come to a working accommodation with it. The world isn't a particularly autism friendly world, uh, so the world needs help in that. Mm. Uh, my son needs help in interacting with it, but uh, maybe that's like his liver as well, and mm. seeking to sort of erase it is like seeking to erase someone's liver. It, it, it's it's it, it it will not end happily. Um, so I've forgotten what question, uh, yeah. but have so I answered like, it even if I didn't? I, I, I like, like, like the idea of coming back to the idea of multitudes and, and 
containing them w without erasing bits of them that that momentarily you, you're worried about or something and that the idea of accepting all these different things that are, are going on in the moment it is somehow creatively beneficial um and also personally beneficial um so do, do you think we should end it here as as as, as our moment of time um let's uh have there other questions we've got a magnificently named gary raven um uh, there's a nice remark just at the top that's addressed to you uh zav um but um i will let you blush over that um <laughs> okay um, so, yeah. um Oh, uh, actually, it's, um, I think auto spell has worked as magic uh, and changed my name a little bit. That's what Gaelic. Um, I met me and Adam were doing a presentation. The, the, the co comment from Ruben um, Montero. Have you read that one? Um, yeah, I, yeah. I, I don't have a question. Ruben, I think I. Um, okay. Sorry. Um, I think I remember you, Ruben. Thank you. All right, good. Uh, I Spanish, yeah. Hey. You're a happy preschool teacher. Ah, oh, dude. <laughs> thank you for that. Uh, now I'm blushing. Um, but thank you and well done. Um, said, Gary, I at the age of 58, well. I've recently... Okay. No, no, sorry. Uh, speaking of it, you go first. I was going to re read Ruben's comment out, so in case people haven't read it, um, but um, during the presentation of the bone clocks, I told him I had a stammer as well, and he encouraged me to be brave, and he signed me a copy of Black Swan Green saying, you're a hero. A few days later, I joined a course on childcare without feeling so scared because English is not my first language, it's Spanish. And years later, I'm a happy preschool teacher. I'm not sure if I would have joined the course without the talk I had with David, which affected me proud, profoundly in a positive way. That's a, a lovely comment. Oh, that's lovely. Uh, I'm sure about something, Ruben. I'm sure about this, that when you come across a kid and you will come across many in preschool who who um, have a more complex relationship with language, that you are the exact right guy for them. Uh, and it's your experience, your former curse of a stammer. Uh, that's exactly why you're helpful. Kind of, you're one of them. You're an insider. You know what it's like. You know what to spot. You know how to help. Uh, lucky kids, that's what I say. Uh, I, I hope to see you again soon, Ruben. Uh, and, and the last question we've glossed over is, Gary, at the age of 58, I have recently begun to write about my stammer stuff, and I'm currently researching the psychological aspects of my disfluency. I do have distinct memories of times when my relationship with my internal monologue has been, shall we say, strained. Yep, been there. In fact, I remember a time when I hated him. Mine was a him as well. But in <laughs> hindsight, is an existential quandary. I could be a nerd and say there's two A's in quandary, but I won't. <laughs> I just did. Uh, as a writer, do you find the words on the page are a way of making peace with your internal monologue? They are quite a way of, well, that's what I'm absolutely, yes. The words on my page more generally, um, they are, I think they're the fruit of my internal monologue. They are where my internal monologue gets the right to exist, uh, gets the right to be good, mm. gets the right to, um, um, you know, many of us are writers uh, in one form or another. Um, you too, Zaf, Gary as well here. Um, sometimes you write a sentence and it's not quite right, polish it, not quite right, polish it change it back to how it was, open it up a bit, close it down a little, add a few words, take a few away, and then if all goes well, then it's there, it's done. It's just beautiful. There's no way you can improve on it. Mm. It's just gorgeous. And you might have enemies, you might have people who despise you, but even they couldn't get you on the sentence. It, 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 the sentence is enemy proof, even though it had a question of it, okay, I hate Mitchell for this reason, this reason, this reason, this. But I've got to admit, that's kind of pretty decent sentence there. Arr, damn you. Um, when you get a sentence like that, isn't that, isn't that just the best feeling in the world? Isn't that just, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And this, this <laughs> deity that I'm looking up to, that's my internal monologue. That's my faculty with language that did that. 
that it's it's that that made me feel so good it's that that gives me that this is the dealer that gives me this high uh and uh that faculty is informed by experience by my reading by by conversation by my love of language and by my stammer so um thank you stammer <laughs> And that's a great, great place to leave it. And, and, and thank you indeed to Stammer for arranging this, um, this conversation. Uh, and thanks so much, David, for being so generous. Um, and thanks for all your great questions. And, and yeah, great to talk to you. It's, it's my pleasure. Thank you for having me. Thanks to everyone for watching this. Um, I hope to meet you corporeally one day. I am so zoomed out. I want to meet people again. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, thanks for everyone for doing this on a Sunday evening. And uh, you too, Zaf. And thank you to Stammer. And I apologise for not letting you get a word in edgeways. I'm not normally this. Um... No, uh, 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 I, I wish you spoke more. And I wish, yeah, <laughs> I wish time was more elastic. But yes. <laughs> thank you.